In today's video, we're gonna go over using Transistor as your podcast host, the pros and cons of using it. Is it the right platform for you? Hopefully helps you make that decision for starting your podcast in 2023 using the Transistor platform. It's not gonna be a full tutorial on how to like host and set up your podcast and promote your podcast and all that stuff. We're gonna look at the pros and cons to help you make that purchasing decision. The quick caveat is I've been doing podcasts now for over a decade. Uh, I'm really knowledgeable in the podcasting space. Used to work at a podcast hosting company for a couple of years. So I have an interesting perspective on using a podcast host. Let's start right off by looking at the pricing uh, as the first pro for using Transistor. Um, I think it's comparable pricing across the board, across other competitors in the space. I think Relatively, you see a lot of podcast hosts in the $19.49 and $99 plans. You might ask yourself, what's the difference? I think for a lot of us that, especially with Transistor, is you can start off at that $19 a month plan. If you don't have a large social following, if you don't have a large audience, this is your first podcast. 99% of the time, starting off at this $19 a month plan is fine. The biggest sort of factor that makes you need to move up is going to be the download uh, limit. Uh, the great thing with Transistor is that you can have unlimited podcasts. In other words, you can have unlimited unique shows in your account, uh, but they do cap the monthly downloads at 20,000, 100,000, and 250,000 respectively. I think if once you start to you know, look at, I'm getting 100,000 downloads a month, now it's time to up, upgrade to the middle plan. Um, chances are you've got some sponsorship money coming in or you're making money elsewhere. Uh, for your podcast and it's becoming a true business. But if you're just a hobbyist and you just wanna start uh, a podcast and have it on a great podcast host, then 19 bucks a month is great for you. What's the difference? Uh, dynamic ad insertion, uh, once you go to the middle plan and above, that'll give you the ability to add ads <laughs> or other dynamic content uh, to the front uh, or middle or end of your shows. And maybe I'll talk about that in a different video dynamic show notes, which can pull in different like tags and templates that you can set up. Um, all plans have automatic posts to Twitter. Um, and then once you move up to the middle plan, you can auto post to YouTube. So if you're trying to build a YouTube presence as well, um, God knows what YouTube and Google is going to do with podcasting. Uh, we just saw the news today or, or the day before uh, that Google is removing the Google uh, podcast results from search. So everyone's kind of scratching their head like, are you just doing away with podcasting? Like what's happening with podcasting at Google? Um, so that'll kill two birds with one stone. $19.49, $99 a month. Uh, that's a pro for me. Pretty standard pricing across the board. Now we're in the dashboard. We'll talk about ease of use and usability. Transistor has been fantastic. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. Um, I'm not lost on anything. Like I know how to add new shows. I know how to upload episodes. I know where to go to find things that I need to configure my podcast. Now, again, I'll, the caveat being is I've been doing this for a while, so I know what I'm looking for. But even if you're getting lost, um, there's helpful little call outs. There's a you know, floating uh, support and help widget that you can click on anytime to find what you're looking for. But largely, it's really easy to use. And I think if you're looking for an easy to use platform, if that's important to you, if you're a novice to podcasting, um, then Transistor is definitely um, winning in that category. I'm going to take a look at the uh, individual upload episode screen that we have in front of me right here, you're not going to get lost. Everything's self-explanatory. Episode title, audio file, drag it, click it, doesn't matter. It tells you exactly what files you need uh, to upload, what the limit is. Um, and then everything else is pretty self-explanatory. You can upload your artwork. You can fill out the description and the show notes. Really easy to use. Um, when we get down a little bit further, I'm going to give you a con and a pro, a pro and a con at the same time when we get to this section. So episode transcripts. It's amazing when a podcast host uh, supports episode transcripts. It's amazing when a podcast host uh, supports podcasting 2.0 and the transcript tag there because what that's going to do is take the transcript file that you upload and then send that out to all of the uh, different players that support that. And there's a lot of podcasting 2.0 apps that support transcripts and a whole bunch of other features, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, you know, there's Fountain FM, Curio Caster, um, pod addict, a podcast addict. There's a lot of other platforms and I'll, I'll probably share those on the channel uh, relatively soon. The con here is that Transistor doesn't do the transcripts for you. So other podcast hosts will ingest your MP3 file um, and then transcribe that service for you or that episode for you and then put it right in the transcript field. I'd love to see tr uh, Transistor move to something like that. However, if you're using something like Descript to edit your podcast, they do connect up to Descript. And Descript, by nature of Descript, works by transcribing your show and then it'll upload that transcript uh, right here for you. And maybe I'll show that off 
uh, in a different video if you're interested. Uh, but otherwise, everything's really easy to use. Uh, I have no problems with finding the information that I need, uh, and it's a thumbs up for usability. I'm going to bundle up uh, pros for analytics and achievements uh, at Transistor. I'm going to show off this podcast, which gets absolutely no listens because I just launched it and it's just something I'm creatively dabbling in. Uh, but the stats and the analytics at Transistor are very easy to read and understand, and they're quick. They update, uh, they update really quick when you launch new episodes and getting the results and running the reports uh, super clean and super fast. I really like that um, about Transistor. You can go back and click on different uh, episodes nice charts, nice graphs. Um, if this podcast got more listeners, we'd see more data here. Um, and that's really cool. Very easy, very simple, and really easy to understand. And I like how they couple that with achievements. Um, it's you know sort of gimmicky. So I mean, it's not a, a true pro to using Transistor, but it is something that encourage you, encourages you to move along as a podcaster. One of the hardest things in podcasting is not the technicals, it's not the hosting, it's not the hardware, it's keeping up as a content creator and having that drive to create a podcast. Uh, and these, achieve, uh, these achievements really help people sort of stay focused and in the lane. Let's just talk about integrations really quick at Transistor. You have your sort of par for the course newsletter uh, applications that it syncs up to, MailChimp, Drip, HubSpot, ConvertKit, MailerLite, ActiveCampaign, and uh, Clavio. I'm a MailChimp user and a MailerLite user. Really love Mailer, MailerLite. We'll probably talk about that in another video. Um, and it's just great. It makes life so much easier. Um, they do private podcasting at Transistor. I won't get into that in this uh, particular uh, episode, but you can connect up your private podcast. You can get a call to action for people to sign up for your newsletter on a Transistor website. Uh, and that's going to lead us right into the next pro uh, and probably last pro of Transistor. The website templates at Transistor are pretty straightforward and pretty simplistic. I mean, I think that's most of what people are looking for uh, on a podcast website. I would say that, yes, I'd love more features. Everyone would love more features with, uh, with their website, having more controls. We can control the, the colors and a few sort of things that are displayed. You can add your own custom CSS if you know how to do that. Um, there are different website settings like intro text, different images that we can swap out and what URLs you want across uh, your theme. You can add things like Google tracking, your own domain, all of this fun stuff. So you can have a nice landing page for uh, your podcast. But yeah, I mean, I'd love some more stuff. I mean, I, I don't know what that is, but maybe I could have a donation button. Maybe I could have things like uh, a better subscribe and uh, email form sign up. Maybe I could track that kind of thing. If I really wanted to have a turnkey website uh, for my podcast that didn't have the overhead of WordPress, I do love WordPress, obviously, especially since you're watching this channel. Uh, but I think for most people, this is going to get them up and running and off the ground. And it's fantastic. It's very easy to use and you can customize it to a degree. So I've given you a lot of pros for Transistor. I'll, I'll end it off with my wish list. So kind of cons, but things that I, I wish uh, Transistor has or has coming or maybe has some plans for. So monetizing a show uh, is very uh, important to me as a creator and not like just in a big ad network. I just want to pay, you know, sort of this industry wholesale CPM model, uh, but allow me to take donations, allow me to set my own uh, price for maybe direct sales, uh, direct to sale ads that I sell as my as a creator, and I can I could sell my own ad for a hundred bucks, and I can just put that on the website, and people could buy it. Um, you know, having that kind of power, that kind of capability, at minimum, a donation widget on the website would be really cool. They do support the funding tag, so you could take it elsewhere to like buy me a coffee. That's pretty cool. Uh, but having something built into the solution, I think is what a lot of us want. Like we don't want to go get another service if we can do it, you know, right here. And maybe potentially uh, Transistor leaving some money on the table. Speaking of money, I wish they would get into uh, exploring the podcasting 2.0 value for value tag. Um, look, I'm not a huge, sort of Bitcoin or crypto uh, enthusiasts or advocate. But I think when it comes to the podcasting industry versus, you know, the, the solo and indie creator versus, you know, big ad networks and big industry, um, we don't have a particular advantage when it comes to marketing budgets and ad spend. And yeah, podcasting 2.0, the value for value tag is allowing us to have a chance to earn some revenue. And yes, it gets a little technical. Yes, it gets a little geeky. It's turning Bitcoin into, you know, little micro forms of payment to you as a creator. But there's a whole movement in the industry. There's a lot of apps that support it now. 
uh, and it's becoming more commonplace. So a solution for value for value would be amazing inside of Transistor. Sort of last con here is syncing up uh, better with WordPress. Uh, there's none at all right now. You have to embed uh, the iframe into your content. Look, we're just looking for like a simple Gutenberg block or something like that that could pull in an episode without me having to copy paste and move all this stuff around. I don't need to build a podcast network or a podcast website fully with all of the, the things that podcast hosts do and have that embedded in my WordPress website. I don't need that. I just need to have a Gutenberg block. I can pull in my episode, display it, and people can listen to it. It just makes, it just helps me save a few minutes in my publishing workflow, which is worth a lot of time <laughs> and money um, when I'm putting this stuff together. So better WordPress support would be amazing. That's it for this uh, pros and cons of Transistor. Again, I'll ask the question that I did at the top of the show. Are you going to start a podcast in 2023? If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Maybe we can talk about those uh, right here on uh, the WP Minute channel. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.